this time I'd like to call the call to order the, the regularly scheduled meeting of the Harlesville City Commission, which has been duly posted. At this time, I'll call upon Commissioner Victor Leal to lead us in an invocation. If you'll join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We just thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us in 2017, Lord. And, and Lord, as we, as we reflect upon those who are no longer with us in 2017, we just mourn for them, Lord. Lord, we ask for a blessing over this meeting, over this commission, over the things that we say and do. We just ask that we allow us to, to honor and glorify your name. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody here to our City Commission meeting tonight. We're glad to have you here. On behalf of the City Commission, well, we, well, uh, we wish you a happy new year and a prosperous new year. We hope that it will be as... Uh, as successful for the as it was for the city of Harlem in 2017, I think that it will be. I, first item on the agenda is a presentation by Brandon Rainey, developer with BC Land, regarding the Harlem Convention Center project. So, Carlos, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Happy New Year! Uh, this evening, uh, Mayor, as you mentioned, we have Brandon Rainey, the uh, developer for the convention center to uh, elaborate and uh, or give us a timeline, give you all the status on the uh, marketing efforts uh, uh, for the convention center, where we're at in a timeline as to where we uh, hope to be with the completion of a marketing plan that will include a uh, operating uh, cost structure, uh, revenues, and rental rates. So with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to Mr. Brown. All right, thank you, Carlos. Brandon, Randy, welcome. Thank Good evening. You. Welcome. Thank, you for, uh, thank you for having me here, and Happy New Year to you as well, and to and to all of you. I, I thought I would be coming down here to escape the uh, 24 degree weather I had at my back porch this morning, but it sounds like you guys are going to get some cool weather tonight. I might you brought, have brought, you brought it with me. you. I think I might have brought it with <laughs> you. So anyway, again, thank you for having me here. Um, I spent some time earlier today over at the at the. Uh, at the site of the construction project, catching up with the contractor, uh, and you know, despite the fact that we've had some uh, weather challenges over the past couple of months, they are uh, making really good progress now. We've we've had some uh, slowdown as a result of weather, but uh, the contractor uh, told me today mm -hmm. that they have a good plan for schedule recovery, and so uh, have a lot of confidence in what they're doing uh, out there at the site. And excited to start seeing the project coming up out of the ground, which we should start seeing here early next month. Uh, with respect to the marketing efforts and the development of a budget for the convention center and rental rates for the convention center, Dan had asked me to, uh, to come in and speak to that. Um, I've had my folks uh, here in the market uh, several times <coughs> over the past several months, uh, really working hard and talking not only with our competitors uh, in the market that exist today over in McAllen and in Brownsville and South Padre and others, but also uh, to businesses in the valley and outside of the valley, really trying to get a beat on uh, our original assumptions and how things are stacking up uh, for when we open this facility later this year. And as Dan and Carlos had mentioned, we are, I think before the end of this month, are going to be in a position to come back for formal approval on actual rental rates of the space, which as I understand has been a, 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 a question that's come up, uh, obviously, that uh, we'd like to have answered. And, and what I have talked with the uh, city manager about is that we want to make certain that we're marrying up what we view as competitive rates, but also acknowledging the level of quality in the actual facility in the level of service that we as the operator intend to deploy at that facility. And so, you know, we're really going and running through the paces to confirm our assumptions <coughs> over the next couple of weeks. And my intent will be then to be in a position to provide uh, the city manager for presentation back to the commission. Uh, I think in two weeks, Dan, is what you and I talked about, uh, what the rental rates are going to be <coughs> proposed uh, for 
2018-2019. And that then will enable us to respond to calls which are already being fielded by both uh, the city and by our office uh, for interest in actually renting and occupying the space. So we're, we're excited about the volume of unsolicited calls that we have been receiving and that the city has been receiving and expect to be, again, before the end of the month in a position to be able to provide rates and actually enter into agreements for uh, uh, rental of the space in the future. Uh, also with those rates, we have developed a full-blown marketing plan, which we will pr present as well, which really digs down into the details of our efforts, what they will be relative to how we're going to run the facility, what our expectations are from a revenue and expense standpoint, and also how we stack up against the other competitors in the market. So that's something that, again, we should be hopefully in a final form for presentation to you guys within the next several weeks. Uh, with that, I mean, any questions that any of the, of, of the commissioners or Mr. Mayor that you guys might have on that or other subjects, I'm happy to, happy to field those. Yeah, we wanted Brandon to come in and give an update to the commission on the marketing efforts and the process that he's undertaking to establish the rental rates, which will come before the city council for consideration in the near future uh, at the next meeting. Uh, that's what we're shooting that's for. That's what we're trying for. Um, so if there's any questions for Brandon at this point. Yes, sir. Okay, so when you say <clears throat> the marketing, are, are we doing any outbound marketing or just collection of information? So right now we're doing collection. We are working, so the, in addition to producing the marketing plan, which you can kind of look as like a business plan, mm -hmm. okay, that's, that's very refined into how we're going to attack the various segments in the marketplace to attract business into the city. Uh, so we are not overtly uh, uh, out, outbound marketing. We are finalizing right now, as an example, marketing collateral and materials such as uh, floor plans and layouts so that when we do go out, we are showing the various capabilities of the facility, the various ways that it can be used. And so we have, over the past several months, been developing that collateral that then we will use for, uh, for, for the outbound marketing that, that we're planning. So. Uh, but that has not started yet. I expect that to start here shortly in the mid, 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 middle of the first quarter. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? All right. Well, I think uh, we appreciate you coming down and keeping us uh, Absolutely. <laughs> apprised and uh, uh, go out there to the site and see, see them working so it's all positive to the Should I ask one of the Yes, sir. What's the status of the hotel? Oh, good. Yeah, I'm actually glad you asked because I intended to, to, to talk about that if I wasn't asked. Uh, hotel is obviously a little bit behind where we wanted it to be. We had originally intended for the hotel to be started on or about the same time as the convention center. That's not the case. We are working on finalizing our financing. Uh, on that, and as I've told the city manager, uh, I don't have any concerns about the if, just the when, and, and the when I think is going to be here uh, in the first quarter uh, that we actually put a shovel in the ground on the hotel, and uh, you know we will be working very hard once we do get started to align the opening of the hotel as closely to uh, that of the convention center as possible. And the way that I really see it playing out is that the hotel, the convention center is going to be running through its paces of you know, pre-opening and, 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 and running through, getting that facility really cranking about the time that the hotel is open. Uh, and so I don't anticipate that from a, uh, a disruption of the convention center, I don't really see in the early months of the convention center being open and getting the paces and all, getting it ready to go and really perform in 2019. Uh, my suspicion is that the hotel is going to be right on the heels of that. Again, not ideal for us in particular because we use, lose some economies of scale as the private developer of the hotel uh, that we otherwise might have been able to uh, take advantage of and having two projects going at the exact same time. But my guess is, uh, Commissioner, that would probably be started in the next couple of months and then be a few months behind the actual opening of the convention center. So that's where it is. Uh, we do have some opportunity on the actual schedule of the hotel, which originally we had at 12 months. Uh, contractor is saying that if we do certain things uh, from, a, from an ex expediting standpoint, that could be as little as 10 and a half months, which, which will help that. Uh, 
so again, our, our intent would be to be under construction here in the first quarter uh, and be as closely aligned to the opening of the convention center as possible. So okay. I don't know if that answers for you, but that, that's just kind of the where, where we are. Again, no concern on our part over getting started. It's just, <coughs> you know, unfortunately, and for a variety of reasons, it's been delayed in our getting the financing package completed, but we expect to have that done post haste. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very Appreciate much. it. Thank you. I have two's recognition to the City of Morrison Vital Statistics Department, recipient of the 2017 Exemplary Five Star Service Award. <coughs> Why don't you, yeah, come on up and we'll, uh, Now, item number three is the approval of the minutes of the special meeting of August 29th, 17, November, the regular meeting of November 15th, 17, special meeting of uh, November 29th, 2017, and the special joint meeting of the City Commission and the Economic Development Corporation of Orange of November 29th, 2017. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Uh, all the minutes as presented. So moved. A second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Consent agenda items 4A through D. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved. A motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 5. Consideration and possible action to authorize the city engineer to negotiate the contract with the respondents for, to call to the call for request for qualifications for surveying services. Yes, yeah. Tammy. Good evening. 
Uh, we solicited proposals of qualifications from surveyors. We sent it out to 30 registered surveys. We got eight respondents back. It, we uh, anticipate go, having it work for a two-year period, and anytime someone would need surveying services, it's not duplicating efforts or doing staff time for doing it over and over for the two-year period. So uh, we had five different staff members evaluate them. All of the respondents, all eight of them, are from the Rio Grande Valley and Harlingen area. And speaking with the city engineer, we thought it would be best, um, since it is for a two-year period, um, to go ahead and put all of them on the list to use them over the next two years. Staff recommends approval of all eight. Is there a motion to so moved. Oh. Second. authorize the city engineer to negotiate the contract? There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. All right, thank, thank you. you. Item six is the update on the multimodal transit facility. Gabe. Mayor, members of the commission, uh, city manager, happy new year. Um, this is an update on the multimodal facility. Uh, as you may recall, this was uh, priority number 13 identified in the comprehensive plan uh, strategy that we had uh, last year um, regarding the uh, completion of the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, this was identified as priority 13. It was priority five within uh, the list of projects that were identified for the transportation uh, this currently is in the, uh, the MPO tip. <coughs> the uh, estimated cost for this is $5 million to $4 million coming from the MPO and $1 million coming from the local match. Uh, we've identified possible toll revenue as a source of funding for this project. Uh, the Development Council is going to be conducting a feasibility study on the actual location of the site. Uh, we're going to provide uh, options to the Development Council to look at for consideration of this uh, particular facility. Um, they should be starting the process within the next 30 days. We just wanted to give the commission an update as to where we were regarding this process. So if you have any questions regarding that process and what the feasibility study may entail, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Now what does multimodal mean? Multimodal would be a facility that would be uh, used to house uh, all your, uh, like your buses, uh, the Development Council currently runs the bus system for the city, so we would, we would house those. Uh, we would also allow for uh, VTC to use that facility as well, uh, Greyhound. Uh, taxi cab services would also service that facility as well. Um, and any other type of, of transit that we may want to funnel through there. So anything that dealt with, with transit at some point, we, we would want to have them utilize that facility. And, and, and of course, we charge rent for the use of that facility, but that's how all the other cities make their revenue uh, to fund the operations for the facility. Have we identified any locations where... We're in the process <coughs> of coming up with maybe, we like to have at least three or four that we give them. Uh, and of course, they may come up with their own options as well. But they're only going to be looking at Harlington <coughs> sites. So that's important. So there are other facilities similar to this in other communities in the valley? Uh, yes, sir. McAllen, Brassel have one. Edinburgh just broke ground on one. Uh, those are the ones that we actually, we visited the operations uh, for the centers in, in uh, Brassel and McAllen. When we went to visit Edinburgh, it was still just uh, uh, land that hadn't been uh, under construction yet. So this is in our comprehensive plan yes sir it, yes. it was uh and then the list of prioritization projects that we had it was identified as priority 13 which was the transit projects uh we put <coughs> for 54 the turnaround on dixieland and a few others and this was priority five in those list of projects how big is do you have an idea of how big the site needs to be uh no not yet um obviously you'd want to have um, we were thinking initially maybe five acres just to have plenty of space for growth, but it's not going to require all five acres. We could possibly make it work with two and a half to three. Um, but here again, you want to have space for growth in the future. So. Okay. Um, so what's the next step? Uh, this was just a report item. Uh, the next step is the Development Council is going to start the, uh, the feasibility study. They're going to actually pay for it. Because they're not going to require any cash from us. So they're going to start the process, and once we get uh, an area identified, we'll come back to the council for approval for that particular location. 
and how long do you think that will take to complete the feasibility study? We're hoping that they can get something to us within, once they start the process, obviously within 30 days. So as soon as 30 days. Uh, Ron just needs to identify some funding, get that together, and then uh, get it out to someone who can actually do the study for the development council. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Yes, sir. All right, very good, thank you. Item seven, consideration and possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading amending Exhibit A of the ordinance number 14-10 and amend Chapter 18 Master Fee Schedule for the Harlem Code Ordinance establishing new rental rates for the vendor booths for various city events held at city parks, establishing rental rights for Harlem Field, establishing rental rights for mobile stage, establishing rental rights for bathroom units, providing for publication or containing other matters to the board going. So that is also you, okay. Yes, sir. Amanda, can you pass out the, uh, yeah. oh, you've got it? Okay, great. Um, now I can go over these in detail if you want, or I can just cover the rental rates. Uh, but this item came up as a result of the audit that the uh, internal auditor conducted for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. One of the things that he identified in his report was that we should have uh, the rates that we charge for the booths, uh, including the sponsorship levels that we have identified and put into an ordinance. So that's where this came from. While in the process of doing this, we also wanted to include the, the rates for the mobile stage, the mobile bathroom, and Hard Engine Field. Now one note in particular is that uh, we have in the ordinance that the mobile stage and the mobile bathrooms will not be rented out to the public. But we have a rate for them because the city does co-sponsor other events. And so whenever we co-sponsor an event, we need to know what dollar value to place on the particular piece of equipment, including the labor costs involved with that. So uh, starting with the rental rates, we've identified uh, the, the mobile stage at a, at a just regular hours of $550, overtime rates of $750, Mobile bathrooms for regular use of six hours is $264.57. The overtime rate would be $339.57. Now, in the ordinance, we also identify all the, uh, the rental rates for uh, the boots that we have for McCovey Park for an event on Blues in the Hill, uh, which is $200. Aurora Lighting, which is less because it's, it's not as long. Uh, and we don't have to spend as much money, which is 140 And then uh, so on down the, the list for the various booth rentals for Lancy Hill, which would be the Freedom Fest. <clears throat> uh, we did as Park, uh, which is single de mile. Now, we're not going to be charging uh, rental booth rates for that because we're not going to provide anything to the public. The public will be allowed to use the facility during the single de mile, but they'll have to bring their own tents, tables, and chairs. Of course, we're going to limit the number of vendors that we allow to uh, participate in the event. It's only about an hour and a half, that's why we're, we're doing that. And then we also have rates for the Casa de Amistad uh, for the boost for the Winter Texan Appreciation Fiesta. Um, and so we actually got these rates from what we're collecting now, so we just put them in an ordinance <coughs> format. Uh, also in the, the second sheet, uh, it lists the sponsorship levels. Now, I'm not going to go over all of them uh, in detail, but it it starts off with the Blues in the Hill and the various levels of sponsorships and what each one would pay either for an event or for all, or for all four events and what comes with each event if you uh, reach those, those levels of participation. Now, the amount shown did not have to be all in cash. For instance, we have $1,000 as a possible sponsor. That could be uh, partially in kind or partially cash, depending on what the, the retailer wants to provide. Um, and we list all, all those amounts for the sponsorship levels for Blues in the Hill. We also have them for Freedom Fest. Uh, now uh, I'd like to point out that <coughs> Blues in the Hill, Hill does cover four events. Freedom Fest is only for one event, a one-day event. Uh, and then the Winter Texan Appreciation Fiesta is also just a one-day event. Uh, but it's got multiple sponsorship levels. And all the, uh, all the levels that are in there now are what we're actually uh, charging right now. So. Okay, so... Um, just so I understand, you, you're, you're already collecting rates, but they haven't, they've never been identified, or, or, we, we, or what's we, uh, the issue with the internal order? Well, you wanted them in an ordinance, that way we could have them uh, identify that we, we can't charge that rate for the uh, particular facility. All the other places that we have, like uh, Lawn Hill, or the auditorium, and the other uh, 
Casa del Sol, mm -hmm. Casa de Amistad, they're all in the ordinance. All yeah, right. We know yes. what we have. These were just so this is, this is fixing them. Yeah. And, 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 and we don't want staff to be yeah, uh, adjusted. The rate, rate, rate that be set by, by okay. work. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's Mayor, fine. Commission, the only thing I would ask is that on, on the mobile bathrooms that we round up, please, okay. to 265 and 340, respectively. I can do that. Uh, I think that'll simplify that just a little bit. Yeah. We, we can do that. I, I, sh I should have done that. Yeah, the question I have, a lot of this is because we're doing co-sponsors and we have to show that there's a value. So like on, yes. the, on the stage, it, it has a value to it. So when it's being offset by the other parties, that's the reason we have, we're not going to actually collect it. But there's a value, so when we... As Dave explained earlier, when we co-sponsor events, we, we want to be able to place that value and what that established value is. Right. Okay. That's what this does. I, I do have one question. Uh, <coughs> I keep getting the same question over and over whenever we have events. Uh, the mobile stage has got logos on it who are not these sponsors. Are we going to come up with some form of compensation what? We well, that or, we, should, we or is that a different topic from this? That's a different topic. Okay. Uh, and and we will bring that back. We are working on that. Okay. But that is a different topic. To so issue. it isn't related to this in any form. Uh, no, I, don't, no. I don't know that we can discuss it. No. Okay. At, that's fine. At this time. That's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. I just wanted to make sure. But we are working on something. It is a different topic. It is yeah. a different topic. Okay. We, we we are working on something. Okay. I'll ask the city attorney to read the caption then for the ordinance. Mm -hmm. An ordinance amending Exhibit A of Ordinance Number 14-10 and amending Chapter 18, Master Fee Schedule of the Harlingen Code of Ordinances, establishing new rental rates for vendor booths for various city events held at city parks, establishing rental rates for Harlingen Field, establishing rental rates for the mobile stage, and establishing rental rates for the bathroom units. Providing for publication and ordaining, ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. We need discussion. Oh, with that. With the with, with the correction of this. The rounding up. The rounding up. Yeah. You accept that with, amendment? With, too. with the correction of the rounding up. I'll second. All right. Motion to second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I suppose like sign the motion carries. Right. Item eight. I'm going to. Uh, pass the chair to the mayor pro tem, and I'm going to uh, uh, exit the chamber. I file an abstention on this. Yeah, let the record uh, show that for number eight, the mayor has filed uh, paperwork on this and has uh, exited the meeting. So we can open up number eight. It's a public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading to rezone from residential single family R1 district <coughs> residential triplex and quadruplex and one districts for lots one and two, block one, Adams Treasure subdivision located at the northeast corner of 7th Street and Vincent Avenue. The applicant is Town and Country Homes, care of Armando Elizade, planning and zoning. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Rodrigo, you're up. Thank you, commissioners, city manager. The applicant is requesting to rezone the subject property from single family district to uh, triplex, uh, quadruplex district to allow for a fourplex on each of the two lots. There is an existing, um, single family residential structure on one of the lots which the property owner uh, is proposing to remove and the other, the corner lot is actually uh, vacant. The surrounding properties are residential, multifamily, um, single family, and we have the academy and the, the Harlingen ISD baseball fields to the west of this property. The comprehensive plan, as you see, shows this to be an area of low density. Although the request is not consistent with the future land use plan, it is consistent with the land use surrounding the property pattern. Um, to present, we have not received any uh, feedback from the people in a negative manner. Nobody came in. The planning and zoning does recommend approval, and so do we 
I can answer any questions. Rico, what the, 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 the GR that's there, what Gen is general what retail is actually on that? Is there is that open? There the general are, retail. Let's see what there. The, you, the one you were just on. Yeah, there we go. So here, there the it's way over there. warehouse, and then there's church. nothing after that. This is this, was, this is an apartment complex. This is a baseball field. Church. Church. Yeah. Okay. That's a church. Yeah. That's uh, <coughs> that's, that's, that's the uh, CFC. Then? <coughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And then that next that open was. land there. Yes. It's general retail. Correct, sir. Does that seem unusual? Well, that's, that was based on the comprehensive master okay. plan that we anticipated that to develop, but it could change. Any other questions yeah. so for the it's, it's going to go from one uh, from R1 to M1. Correct. And next to it is M2. Correct. Correct? No. And what's the difference between M1 and M2? The M1 is a triplex <coughs> or, a, or a quadruplex. The M2 is an apartment complex. Got it. Yeah. So it's it's similar, similar but not the same. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, but the Multiple actual family. buildings themselves in the apartment complex wind up being just like that. They either right. have four or six. Right. Or the, the apartment so complex is usually treated as a plan development because right. it's, a, it's a bigger site, bigger units. Correct. Right. Any other questions of the commission? Okay. Uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, anybody would like to speak for or against this, uh, please approach the podium. Uh, no one has approached the podium. We'll close the public hearing. Uh, so we'll take the consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on the first reading for a rezone of the above described property. A motion for approval? Well, hang on. What do you mean? With the captain? Yeah, we'll have the attorney. Uh, an ordinance amending the code of ordinance. Ordinances of the City of Harlingen, rezoning from residential single family R-1 district <coughs> to residential uh, triplex and quadruplex M1 district for lots one and two, block one, Adams <coughs> Treasure Subdivision, located at the northeast corner of 7th Street and Vincent Avenue, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Okay, I'll, I'll have a motion to that effect. So moved. I'll second. I said first and the second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion carries. On to number nine. Consider an ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit to allow a bar lounge in a general retail GR district located at 1105 South Ham Lane, bearing a legal description of 3.47 acres, out of Block 33, Stewart Place Subdivision Survey 139/297/298. Applicant is Ruben Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. The applicant wishes to operate a bar lounge under the name Club Envy. The area occupied approximate is approximately 22,958 square feet. The previous use of the property was a church, and the prior use before that was a bar. <coughs> um, the establishment must comply with off-street parking regulations based on the seating and arrangements. 45 parking spaces will be required, and they are providing 62. The proposed days of hours of operation is going to be Wednesday through Saturday from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. A security guard will be present during the operation hours, and a DJ will play music indoors. I have a question. Um, yes, sir. Is that, uh, is that asphalt, or is it still caliche in the parking lot? Uh, yeah. It may be a little bit degraded right now, but the first step was to get this SUP approved. Once they get approved, they still have to comply with building permits, health, okay, so, and everybody else. So if else. it is caliche, are they going to have to ask They're going to have to ask for the yes, okay. Then I have another question. I was yes. reading the uh, minutes from the uh, uh, P&Z meeting, yes, sir. and there was a Mr. Izaguirre there yes, sir. that 
owns some property to the north. Can you? Is that that triangle? Is that that rectangle right there? The small one above the. Actually, yes. Is right that him? Here. Yes. Doesn't he have a problem with the length and width of that thing? Yes. Sir. That, that, that is a separate issue that we have discussed with Mr. Gideon. and we've invited him I to I just saw how to long it was compared to the frontage. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, is, that is a one acre that was taken out of a five acre track through meets and bounds. Right, okay. So he, he, he may have some issues when he tries to develop that land. But it, it doesn't affect this. I'm I just wonder if that was it. <coughs> Did you complete your presentation? Yes, sir. All right. I'm oh, sorry. Planning and zoning is recommending approval. That's I'll go to <laughs> IFA and, and a public hearing. Is there anyone like to speak for or against this SUP? Hearing that, I'll close the public hearing and go to item B, which is the consideration of possible action to improve an ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit to allow bar lounge at the above described property and ask the city attorney to read the caption. An ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances of the City of Harlingen to issue a specific use permit is from key to Ruben Martinez to allow a bar slash lounge in a general retail GR district located at 1105 South Tam Lane <coughs> and bearing a legal description of 3.474 acres out of <coughs> Block 33, Stewart Place Survey, 139-297-298 subject to, one, providing and maintaining the required off-street parking spaces in accordance with city regulations, two, maintaining the existing landscaping, three, providing surveillance video with a 30-day retention of video, four, providing a licensed security guard during peak hours of operation, Thursday through Saturday from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m., Five, maintaining adequate lighting in and around the site. Six, obtaining and maintaining the proper state permits. <coughs> and seven, complying with the requirements administered by the planning, building inspections, health, police, and fire prevention <coughs> departments prior to the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Item 10, public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit to allow an adult business a tattoo shop in a general retail district located at 1617 East Harrison Avenue, Suite A, bearing a legal description of lots 13 through 16 block G, East Park <coughs> Terrace subdivision. The applicant is Roger Castillo. Agree on. Thank you, Mayor. The applicant is requesting a specific use permit to allow a tattoo <coughs> shop in an existing site on Harrison Plaza. The applicant currently operates a barber shop out of said site and would like to offer tattooing services. The hours of operation for the barber shop will be Tuesday through Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the hours of operation for the tattoo shop will be from Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. So did I hear you correctly, the barber shop and tattoo shop? That is correct, sir. That is, that is what they're proposing. And will they, they'll operate at different hours? Right, but in the same location, same home, just offering more options. Um, of course, the applicant must obtain the, and maintain the proper state permits, and to present the plan in Sony has not received any objections from the surrounding uh, neighbors. Um, the PSC, the, I'm sorry, the PNZ recommends approval. And I can answer any questions. Yes, sir. And, and so the, the barbershop does not exist at this point. They're going to open simultaneously. It's already there. Okay. Oh, it's already there. So they're they're adding a service. They're, they're, gonna, they're just going to add They require the SUP because of the wall. tattoo. <clears throat> right. I, I saw that. I just wanted to make sure. I, it didn't say anything in here how it worked, but I, I was like, they're, or they're together. So he's going to rent like a booth. Okay. Here's, right, here's, here's a quick layout if you want to see. Yeah, I saw it. Can't okay, I'm going to go to times I wished I could get a tattoo while I was getting my hair cut. <laughs> <laughs> now you can, sir. I knew 
knew somebody was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know we, we left the meeting. So. All right, item eight, the public <laughs> hearing. I'm going to open the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak for or against the specific use permit? Hearing that, I'm going to close the public hearing and uh, go to item B, which is the consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading for a specific use permit to allow an adult business tattoo shop at the above described property and ask the city attorney to read the caption. This is an ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlan <coughs> to issue a specific use permit, SUP, to Roger Castillo to allow an adult business uh, tattoo shop in a general retail district located at 1617 East Harrison Avenue, bearing a legal description of lots 13 through 16, Block G, East Park Terrace subdivision, subject to, one, providing and maintaining the required off-street parking spaces in accordance with the city regulations, two, maintaining the existing landscaping, three, obtaining and maintaining the proper state permits, and four, complying with requirements administered by the planning, building inspections, health, fire prevention, and police departments providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 11, board appointments. Are there any board appointments? No, sir. No. Any board appointments? No, sir. All right, no board appointments. So we're going to go to item 12. We have four executive session items. First one, uh, for sentence section 551.071 and 551.072 and 551.087087, Texas Government Code, to discuss and to, you know, deliberate regarding commercial financial information that the city has received from the business prospect that the city seeks to have to locate, stay, or expand in or near the city in which the city is conducting economic development negotiations and to discuss to, uh, to, and deliberate financial or other incentives with ULA and to deliberate the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property and seek legal advice from the city attorney and B to consult the city attorney regarding the NPO merger and C uh, to consult in connection with the city's rights, privileges, uh, and obligations arising out of the impasse ordinance adopted in September 2017 in the collective bargaining negotiations, and D, the uh, provide legal advice and the city's legal rights, privileges, and obligations arising out of various industrial development agreements previously negotiated by the city as a motion to go to the executive session. So Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed to the carries. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to now be in executive session to consult with our attorney on various items. Uh, there could be some action items when we return. Okay, we're out of executive session at 6.42. 6.42. So, next item on the agenda is item 13, consideration of possible action on Project ULA. At discussed in executive session, is there a motion to uh, to approve the action as discussed in executive session. So moved. So moved. We have a motion and a second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. We're going to pass item 14. There being no action uh, we need to take. Item 15, consideration of possible action to ratify collective bargaining labor agreement between the city and police departments duly recognized majority bargaining agent <coughs> HPO LEA conditioned on prior ratification by the HPO LEA and its members. Um, Mayor, Commissioner, uh, this is a collective bargaining agreement that was tentatively agreed to by the union last August. Um, uh, we thought it was going to be approved back then and then we had actually, I think, even posted it for action before the city commission. It was not, however, approved by the membership at that time. Recently, they undertook a revote on that tentative agreement, um, and this time it did pass with some minor amendments. Um, the effective date of the contract 
in terms of its operational provisions for civil service and that kind of thing would be effective upon ratification by both parties. It's already been ratified by the union. It will now be ratified. So that component would take effect upon approval by you. The fiscal component of it, which would be the pay increases that were negotiated, that's been amended and those would begin in the first full pay period after April 1 of this year. So that uh, uh, HR tells me that that begins, April 1 is a Monday, the first full pay period begins Wednesday. So I mean, virtually the same. So the fiscal component would be exactly a half a year into the fiscal budget. And so that would, that would take, uh, kick in at that time. And then the contract is a, was originally a three year contract had it been approved back then, it would have started October 1. Now it will go until the end of, of the year 2020. So it's the same deal, we just have this little gap period, but um, uh, we still have effectively the remaining two and a half years of the contract. So uh, uh, Mr. Sutter and I have reviewed this and gone over it, we've talked to HR. Uh, we would like to, we were prepared to get closure on it back in September. Uh, we would like to go ahead and recommend that we get closure and ratify this contract at this time. Okay, is there a motion to approve the staff's recommendation? So moved. As presented. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. All right, congratulations on uh, completing uh, that collective <coughs> bargaining. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. All right, I have 16 cents of communication. There is none. none so, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Stay warm. <laughs>